So today I want to work with building a nav bar using Bootstrap. Now I have their basic template. Now I have the basic template from getbootstrap.com and we'll be of course using Bootstrap version 4 in this case. Usually your nav bar is going to be outside of your container elements and it's going to be 100% width just like the container fluid so it's going to take up the whole space of its containing element. Usually that's going to be your HTML page itself. You can have more than one nav bar in an HTML page. Now I'm going to show you just using the header. To do this I have my template. I have a little comment where I'm going to put my nav bar and I'm going to add a nav tag. The nav tag is an HTML5 tag that you can use. However, we need to add some additional classes to help work with styling this. So I'm going to go ahead and add a class attribute. In some class attribute, I have to have the class nav bar. Now, there's several other additional classes I can use. They're going to specify things like the default color of my nav bar, whether I want it to be sticky or fixed at its position at the top of the page. Let's look at doing the colors for right now. I have navbar dash light space bg dash light. So this is going to be the light colored navbar. If I go to the getbootstrap.com and look under the components, I can find my navbar. Then I can see how to also use things like navbar dash dark or choose something like bg dash primary as their example show. So I can choose different backgrounds and change it up by specifying some. Let's look at my content, however. <clears throat> so I've just added a little comment. It's not necessary. The one thing, however, that you'll find all the time is your nav bar brand. This is a common thing. This is essentially like a logo that you can use. Most of the time, by default, you're going to use text. However, it is possible to use an image if you use the right classes. Now, in this particular case, we are using an anchor tag with a class of navbar-brand. This is to create that brand element for us. Inside my anchor tag, I'll just put the title of the website, and you'll notice I have an href. Now, by default right now, it's showing a hash mark. That will just take us to the same page. It doesn't take us anywhere itself. However, I will usually do something like put a backslash that will take us to the root home page of the website. Or I could put in an actual web address if I prefer. Just kind of depends upon what I'm trying to do with it and how I'm trying to make sure I get my content. Your navbar brand text is going to be a little bit larger. It's by default coming on your left hand side and it gives you a little bit of flexibility. If I want to use an image, a lot of times I have to use some special classes in order to resize my image down to an appropriate size. Your nav bar is usually going to be pretty small across the top of the screen. This gives more space for the rest of your content of your website. Now let's look at adding a menu. Now your menu may disappear depending upon the size of your screen. So a lot of times we'll show a menu, for example, on a desktop by default, but if they're on a phone or maybe even a tablet, it's going to disappear. So let's show you how we're going to do that and what button we're going to provide to allow the user to click on to see our menu if the menu has disappeared. So the first thing we need to do is specify when the menu is going to be expanded. So here in this example, we're using a class navbar-expand-lg. That means whenever our screen is set to large, we're going to see the menu. If we don't have a large screen, i.e. the browser window is too small, usually because of physical constraints on the device, the menu is going to be hidden by default. I can change that LG to be MD, SM, whatever I want to be to handle the right sizes. Typically, you'll have it either as a medium or a large. Next, we need to provide some functionality. So if the menu is hidden, it's collapsed, we can click on it and see our menu. I'm going to be honest, I almost always copy and paste this because there's a lot of information and it's important to get that right. So let's take a look at what this is. This is all wrapped inside of a button. You'll notice that it has a class called navbar-toggler. 
this is important. This is something that the JavaScript code that comes with Bootstrap is going to be looking for, as well as the CSS. It has some ARIA controls that are going to be used for screen readers and other types of accessibility functions. And we have a span inside of it with a toggler dash icon. This will produce what they call sometimes the hamburger, which is just those three little lines that everyone seems to know what it means. You click on it and it expands on a menu. Since we're using expand navbar dash expand dash large, this would be hidden if you're a large or extra large screen. However, if you're a small, medium, or extra small, this button would display. Next, we want to build our navigation structure. So this is going to be the next little piece still with inside of our nav tag. Here I have two divs, and we need both of them to be able to handle the collapsing nature of our menu in case it's not seen. In our first div, we have a collapse class and we have our navbar dash collapse. We need both of these because of how Bootstrap is working. It also has an ID and we need to make sure we keep this. You'll notice that this ID here matches up with this data target. So if you're using multiple nav bars, for example, one in the header and one in the footer, you'll need to make sure that you don't use the same IDs or data targets. Inside of this div, we have another div that's the class of navbar dash nav. And this is where our actual navigation is going to go. Now, our actual navigation can be handled in one of two different ways. First, it can be handled as an unordered list. And this works great if you have, for example, submenu items. It's very logical to have menu items and submenu items using multiple lists. However, we don't have submenu items in this particular case. So we're going to use just a list of anchor tags. This makes it a little bit faster to write, a little bit shorter file size to make it faster to download. Inside of my anchor tags, each one you'll notice has a couple of classes. One is a nav item class and a nav link class. I have here shown an active class. This lets us kind of highlight it. We also have, for example, a span with a class of SR only. SR only is for screen readers only, so it's hidden from the normal screen, but a screen reader can read this and it will display that it is current. That way, if you're using a screen reader, you know what the active page is. The HS right now is just a hash mark, which links us to the same page. We would, of course, modify this as we need to. Additionally, we also show you here how to have a disabled link. You notice with the disabled link, not only do we have a disabled class, we also use the aria-disabled. I'm going to save this real quick just so we can test this. And by testing it, we'll have a chance to see it inside of a web browser and see how it works. Okay. Here we have our screen. It is loaded inside of Chromium. You can see because we're a large screen, we have our menu items and it is currently being displayed. Home is shown just a little bit more prominently and we have a disabled, which not only when I move my mouse cursor over, does it not allow me to click on the link. It also doesn't change it to the little finger letting me know it is a link. You'll notice when I shrink my web page, the navigation bar does not go away, but my navigation items do. In its place, I now have a little button on my right hand side with my hamburger or three horizontal lines. If I click on that, down comes my navigation. My navigation link will always stay off to my right hand side, even in the smallest setting. And as long as I say underneath the large size, I have this option. The large size is generally considered for desktops. Anything smaller than that is considered to be either a tablet or a phone in most circumstances. So this is why we typically use that collapse dash large in our nav bar definition. And that is how we build a real simple nav bar for working with our website.